Hello everyone, welcome to another battle report for the channel. Today we have a Kings of War battle report, 2000 points, dwarfs versus kingdoms of men. The dwarf list is a similar list to what you've seen before, but we'll go over it quick. A one regiment of bull workers, one regiment of iron guard, one regiment of, or one horde of shield breakers, uh, one troop of rangers, one horde of earth elementals, steel behemoth, greater earth elemental, army standard bearer with the healing charm, king on a large beast, talisman of life, and a stone priest. The kingdoms of men list is a heavy pike horde, a heavy pike regiment, another heavy pike regiment, a knight's regiment, a berserker's regiment, Two troops of mounted scouts, general mounted on a pegasus, um, not the general on the winged beast, the uh, regular general variant, it's about 40 points cheaper, a army standard bearer, wizard with bane chant, uh, inspiring talisman, uh, another wizard with bane chant, and a beast of war and two cannons. Uh, we go off into deployment, this is obviously after we rolled for the scenario invade. Um, this is the dwarves, my opponent's deployment. Um, on the left, or on, on his, our left, his right, Iron Guard, Berserkers. Oh, I might have forgot to list them. So, there's also a troop of Berserkers. I think I forgot to list those, but anyway. Iron Guard, Berserkers, Bulwarkers, Army Standard Bearer, Shield Breakers. And as we keep going, it'll be Earth Elementals, Greater Earth Elemental, with the Stone Priest behind them. The Steel Behemoth, King on a Large Beast, and the Troop of Rangers. Um, as a side note, this is my opponent's second game ever of Kings of War, and probably one of his second game ever of a tabletop game. So, still a little bit of learning for him, but goes, comes out pretty well. Um, the Kingdoms of Men, or my side of deployment, starting from my left to right, and our right to left, but anyway. Um, scouts, oh... Uh, Beast of War, two cannons on the hill, berserkers, behind the berserkers is the king on a pegasus, or a general on a pegasus, sorry, I don't have kings, um, the painted regiment is the regiment of pikes with no upgrades, um, the unpainted regiment is the regiment of pikes with the dragon kind, uh, kind of playing with, um, treating them as like a, a Spanish tertio, like pike and shot little block. Um, and then there's the horde of pikes, and behind the two pikes are the two wizards. Um, the one on the left here is the in, uh, inspiring wizard. Uh, then on the far end, uh, we have the knights being screened by a troop of scouts. So, oops, so here's the overview before we get going. So, pretty pretty standard lineup. So turn one, and turn one goes to Kingdoms of Men. Uh, so the movement, um, and also as a note, I, I, I didn't put any movement arrows in this one. Um, if people want those back, just let me know. I think it's it's kind of time consuming to go through every slide and put an arrow. So anyway, everything just kind of moves up. Obviously not the cannons. Um, the berserkers are going left around that impassable terrain as opposed to right. Uh, these pikes move up. Um, they only just move up five inches because a bunch of them are crawling over the uh, obstacle there. And on this side, the knights and scouts just move way up to attempt a flanking maneuver. So the overview after moving. Coming into shooting, um, the scouts on the left uh, pick out this office target, which is obviously the berserkers. And I believe this is the mages with their lightning bolt. Uh, both the mages have the lightning bolt option instead of fireball. So we go to dwarves, turn one. Um, all of the dwarves on this side shuffle up a um, reasonable amount. And the dwarves on this side um, shuffle up a little bit and reposition to focus on these um, coming what's up on their flank. Overview of that. Um, dwarf shooting is surprisingly little. Um, being it's a more of a melee focused group, but uh, heal takes the damage off of the berserkers 
and the rangers put a f- few points of damage into this pike guard but that's about it so uh turn two turn two um the kingdoms of men on the left flank move up a little more tentatively um being this is invade we just both have to get our units fully across the other side but there's plenty of time <laughs> to get these guys across uh, my my uh general on a pegasus didn't fly over because he's still um a 20 inch move wouldn't quite clear any of those units so just moved up like this the pikes move up keeping their line cohesive the scouts and knights move around to form a form a flanking maneuver shooting we put a scouts put a, a damage more back on these berserkers and one of the cannons lands a hit on these um shield breakers but it doesn't do a lot and the wizards get another damage through on the um great earth elemental here and the last unit of scouts uh puts the damage through on the rangers so just an overview after that um dwarves turn two the dwarves move up fairly aggressively um my opponent conceding the fact that he is going to get charged decides he might as well just push up and take it as is. Um, the bull workers held back a little bit compared to everyone else, but everyone moved up. Uh, fairly similar on this side, um, giving me a choice of the tank or the king. Um, yeah, it's moving up, moving around. Pretty standard. Uh, overview after that. We go into shooting, and the the um, the army standard bearer is healing these guys. So heals takes that off. Uh, the rangers put a few shots into my um, scouts here and route them. And that was about it. So we go into turn three. Turn three has uh, charges all over the place. Um, my general on the Pegasus flies over top of the berserkers the the uh, beast of war uh, slams headlong into the berserkers um the scouts being uh nowhere for them to really get around um go out to just in, they, they were going to chaff up that iron guard on the end so they might as well charge they're just as good at charging as they are at shooting so they're going to perform the same function regardless um, and the, the berserkers charge into the shield of breakers <coughs> on the other side of the board. The two pike regiments double charge the greater earth elemental. The horde of pikes takes the charge into the king and the knights, um, in a little bit of a cheekier move, decide to ignore the tank and the king and go clean up the rangers. Uh, so this is an overview of that. I'm trying to include a few overview pictures. Uh, we move into magic and shooting. Both wizards successfully cast a bane chant on their pike regiment. They're backing up. Uh, so we go. Um, the cannons missed. So we go into combat. Um, the knights successfully put a bunch of damage on the rangers, and not surprisingly, rout them. And reform as such. The, the Pike Horde uh, does a whole... Well, the Pike Horde is vicious and elite, but does not have any um, crushing strength inherently. So they only put two damage on the king. Um, not, you know, 30 attacks eh, is a little low, but takes sixes. So uh, nothing much. Um, my two Pike Regiments, though, do some work. Uh, get that, get that uh, bad boy up to 12, 12 damage and route him. Um, quite good, quite good for the pike regiments. Um, and they reform as such afterwards. The berserkers for the humans put on eleven, you know, something like nine damage onto these shield breakers, which is okay, but not enough, obviously. Um, the beast of war whatever 
Yeah, the beast. He comes in. He puts a, a okay amount of damage, eight on these guys, uh, and routes them. When reforms like such, and not suspectedly, the chaff scouts uh, bounce off the iron guard with uh, zero damage. So, uh, this is just the overview of what everything looks like afterwards. Uh, dwarves, turn three. Um, King charges the pikes. Um, iron guard charge. Uh, the scouts, the bulwarkers charge the beast of war. Um, the shield breakers charge the berserkers. Um, the elementals charge the pikes, the painted pikes. The um, tank re or, or just does a ninety degree pivot, so we can still shoot, um, but but then um, also take take on the knights in the front, obviously instead of the flank. Uh, and that stone priest does actually end up charging into those pikes in front of him. So there's an overview of that. Uh, door shooting, uh, a little bit of healing action on these uh, shield breakers. Uh, at the top you can see the tank shot at the knights and got a little bit of shooting done. Uh, in a combat... Um, only three. Seems kind of low. Well, okay. So maybe just rolled really poor. These elementals didn't do much damage. Um, these guys, though, uh, beat beat the crap out of these berserkers. No problem. Um, they have the plus one to hit items, so 25 attacks, hitting on threes, wounding on twos, pretty expected. Um, reform like this. The bull workers only manage one point of damage on the uh, Beast of War. Um, the Iron Guard handily route their guy, no problem, and reform like that. So, that's about that. We move into turn four. Turn four, the Beast of War and General double charge the bull workers. The, um, Army Standard Bear, who's been walking around there, he's just a great guy, um, goes to decides to, uh, sacrifice himself for the greater good. In front of that horde old horde of shield breakers. Um, on this side, everyone essentially goes back in. Um, the pike regiment charges the earth elementals. The pikes charge the stone priest. Pikes charge the king. Knights charge the tank. Uh, we do get one successful bane chant off on these guys. Um, the cannons. One of the cannons lands a shot. On these guys um, go into oh and we get another Bane Chan off on the Knights it looks like that's what that little round token is um, after combat we do pretty poor um, on these bull workers uh, we only get six damage on and we only waver them the pikes don't do much to these earth elementals not terribly surprising these pikes do one damage to their stone priest and waver him. And the pikes on the king do jack squat hardly, but they do waver him. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty sweet. Too bad he's a dwarf. Um, yeah, and then the, the pikes on the tank do terrible. Or the knights on the tank do quite terrible. But it was a hindered charge because that's um, rough, rough terrain that they're on so they were they weren't hitting that great they didn't get their thunderous charge so go to an overview of that uh, back in uh, I think I was just I think this is just showing um, oh right so headstrong headstrong not headstrong the bulwarkers are the only ones that didn't make their headstrong roll so um, the Iron Guard comes smashing into the flank of the Beast of War, which sucks for me. Oh, and the Shield Breakers charge the uh, Army Standard Bear. The Earth Elementals go back into their pikes. The um, Stone Priest goes back into his pikes. The King goes back into his pikes. And the Tank goes crashing into the Knights. Um, this is showing um, regeneration here. 
kicking off. His his regen rolls weren't that great, but it was helping. Army Standard Bear healing these guys up a little bit. Uh, and after combat, um, the tank puts a few wounds on the knights. It's not not a lot, but a few. Um, the bulwark, or not the bulwark, it's the iron guard in the flank, um, waver my beast of war. Um, and that was about it for combat. Not a lot else. People just smacking around. Um, oh, okay. Not quite. Looks like the, uh, the pikes were wavered by the earth elemental. Sorry about that. Um, pictures not quite so conclusive. Um, so, but it looks like this is the start of men five. Um, those pikes are wavered, so they're hanging out. The pike, other the the middle pikes are charging that stone priest again. Um, the other pikes are obviously charging the king again, and the knights are obviously going to charge the tank again. Um, that's just the wizard uh, next to the king is the inspiring one, so she's just moving up to get her nine inch bubble on everybody. Um, over here, you can see that the um, shield shield breakers obviously ate that ate that uh, army standard bear, and he just reformed them after that combat. So now you can start chugging to the other side of the board and go after those cannons. Uh, the king goes back into the flank of the bull, or the general goes back into the flank of the bull workers. The beast of war is wavered, so he's sitting still. We move into the shooting phase. Um, one of the cannons lands a hell of a good shot on these guys, putting them up to 17 damage. But I roll, well, I didn't have to, have to roll double ones for them to stay, but, you know, who would have thunk it? Not getting rid of them anytime soon. Uh, we get Bane Chant off on the pikes. Just pretty good. Um, after combat, we get the bulwarkers up to 10 points of damage, but we don't get anything. We end up doing a lot of damage to the king on the beast here, but I roll a three, so he's hanging out. Um, and we only put like three more damage on the tank, so not super great. Uh, we move into dwarfs turn five. The um, the uh, shield breakers uh, trugging along to uh, go pick up those cannons. Uh, it's it's invade, so it doesn't. He just wants them to stop shooting at him. Um, the bull workers counter charge the king, or the king, the general, on the griffin. The uh, iron guard there reflank the uh, beast of war. Now that I think about it, I could have reformed him. Yeah, I probably should have done that. Oh well, wasn't going to help that much anyway. He was probably dead. Um, elementals go back into them. The, everybody just recharges. And this is showing more of that same. So, um, after the combat, the tank does super good work this time. Gets the knight up to a 15, but wouldn't you know it, he can roll double ones too. So the knights are hanging around. Uh, the king gets the pike horde up to 12 points of damage. Pretty good. The uh, lone stone priest ends up actually doing a couple points of damage. And the Earth Elementals finish what they've started and route the pikes. And overrun a whopping one inch. The bull workers, um, they put a couple, like three damage on the general. Which isn't much, but when you roll out of the box, you waver him. Uh, the Iron Guard handily route the uh, Beast of War here. And overrun. <coughs> So we move into turn six. Um, not a lot to do, um, obviously, since everyone's either in the combat they need to get into, <coughs> excuse me, or um, they're just moving a little bit. So go into shooting. Um, the cannons land another lucky shot and get rid of them some iron shield breakers, which is huge. Um, that was a big, big points. It was just sitting right in my side of the table. Um, on this side of the table, um, the only thing I, I don't have a picture of here is my non-inspiring wizard went to stand in front of the earth elementals. 
so that they would have to kill her and get a lucky overrun to get into my side of the board. But I'll, I'll have a picture of that later. Um, so the pikes, the pikes go in, they successfully route the uh, king and they overrun up a little bit. Um, the knights utterly fail uh, at killing the tank. So they're toast. Um, these pikes actually end up killing the, um, you know, the, the stone priest. So that's good. Um, and you can see here what I was saying. The um, uninspiring wizard went to stand in front of the earth elementals so that it would be very hard for him to get into my deployment zone if we don't get a turn seven. If we get a turn seven, that's a different story. Uh, so we move into dwarves turn six. Uh, this is an overview view before the start. Uh, you can see the Iron Guard come trugging along just to make sure they get near the other side of the board. And the Army Standard Bear himself moves up and spins around so he can keep healing the bull workers, but still be in my side of the table. Uh, the Earth Elementals charge the Lone Wizard and the tank goes back into the Knights. A little bit of healing. A little bit of crashing into the knights. It didn't matter. He didn't roll double ones twice. One or double ones, not twice. Not double ones twice. So they were gone. Uh, the elementals come in and <laughs> bounce. They only did four damage to my wizard. It was really, really sad. Um, and he didn't <laughs> didn't even roll enough. So um, the bull workers come in on my general. Yeah, and he just rolls really low. Like, he got a damage through, but he just didn't roll enough to route him. And then we roll a 4, 5, or 6 to see if we're going in again, and we don't. No turn 7. So here's just an overview of the board. Um, you can see the only two scoring units he has in my zone are the Iron Guard and the Army Standard Bearer. On this half of the table, the only scoring unit the men have, or I have, is the general on the Pegasus. And on this side of the board, the only two scoring units are the regiment of Pike and the wizard. The horde of Pike is just towed in to my half of the table. Um, the um, overrun just wasn't enough after they killed the king. They fell short and couldn't move out, so... Uh, in conclusion, it actually ends up being a draw. Um, Kingdom of the Men were about 180 points ahead, uh, but that's not the 200 points needed for a victory. So it was a draw. Um, it was a good list or a good game. Both these armies are mine, um, and I made both the army lists, but they were both pretty nice, fighty lists um, made for an interesting invade scenario. Um, I don't. I don't think at any point it was obviously anybody's game, so that's always fun. Um, the only other thing to ask is uh, if, if you guys want me to put the, well, if you guys, who knows, uh, if, if anybody wants me to, thinks I should put the lines back in to indicate troop movement, let me know. I could probably consider doing that again. It's just one of the more time, time consuming annotations I've done. Um, otherwise, I'm looking forward to painting up many many more of these guys it's just it takes a while I, at my rate I'm lucky to get a guy done a night so I don't I don't want to skip on the quality but I want to keep playing so well I'll try to get these short up so we can get some more reports in with painted guys but otherwise thanks for watching guys and we'll catch you next time